Welcome to Ucanic. Today we have a 2016 Mercedes Metris, and on this vehicle we have a check engine light that's on. Um, this vehicle has a 2.0 liter turbo engine in it, otherwise the 274 engine. And so um, we're going to check the code and see what that sensor is, and then go over that process to be able to replace the sensor, and then maybe some other diagnostic you may need to do. So to start with, um, we have our OBD2 scanner hooked up, to UCAN-2. Um, key on in the run position with the vehicle not started and be able to um, go through the, uh, the menu here to get into the vehicle, um, go to diagnostic. Now this is a van, so it, we would go to the Mercedes slash Sprinter. If you go to the Mercedes icon one, it won't bring up all the stuff that you need on there. So we want Mercedes Sprinter. In our smart van. This communicates, gets us our VIN number. And now we're going to do a control module so we can select the individual module. If you do um, quit scan, you can scan everything in the vehicle. And then motor electronics. Then we're going to read our codes. And we've got a couple in here. We have a stored slash current. This is the one we're more concerned about. Um, these are, this one's stored, and this one is something that we need to look into. But we have a P24D812. That's what we have on, and it says it's a pressure sensor, pressure switch number two of the evaporative emission control system has a, a short circuit positive. Um, and so that's where we're gonna find that sensor and go over that process to be able to replace. So this sensor is located down below this, um, your fill control or where you would fill your engine oil up through and so there's a little tab down here at the bottom you can press it toward the uh, left side or right side of the vehicle or toward the interior of the engine and then once you do that you'll be able to pull this up and remove it and set it to the side there and then we have an electrical connector right here pull back that little tab and then be able to squeeze that and unhook it and then if you turn this of a 90 degree, then you'll be able to pull this sensor out. There we go. And then we pull that sensor out to be able to replace it with a new one. Okay, so we have our new sensor. Being able to, if you look down in there, you'll see these little tabs where they line up. At that 90 degree, press it in, twist to lock into place, and then as you install the sensor, being able to lock it in, that also gives it a secure lock so that it doesn't come out. And then, of course, put your uh, oil fill apparatus back into place, and now we clear the code out. And so we go into here to erase, yes. And I'm saying that we can't erase some of them because there's some type of fault. And so that's something we need to do. So now it is done stored and that's what we want. So now, of course, go ahead and start your vehicle, run it a couple times, cycle it through, do your normal um, daily driving. And um, if that sensor comes back, well then you're gonna potentially need to be looking for some other things now, whether the wiring, something has happened to the wiring that comes to that sensor or maybe something in the EVAP system is a leak and you need to fix that. Thanks for watching. You can't agree you can be the